Hi, my call sign is Foxtrot One Alpha Tango Bravo. Here we have a system called Remote SDR. Remote SDR is a system to manage a transceiver based on two SDR, two software defined radios, one for the receiver, one for the transmitter. Behind these two SDR, there is a um, Raspberry Pi or a Orange Pi processor to do all the signal processing and the complete set is controlled and managed using a simple web browser like here, we have here on the screen. Now, here we have a configuration to the, dedicated to the satellite Q100. I will not describe the complete set but I will focus today on uh, the frequency management of the receiver and the transceiver. On the receiver side, we have uh, the central frequency, which is defined here, uh, 10 GHz, 489 MHz, 750 uh, kHz. This is the central frequency of uh, the SDR. Uh, around this frequency, we cover a band of 500 kHz, so plus or minus 250 kHz, which is represented here on this uh, spectra, the waterfall and the amplitude representation of the spectra. In any case, you can change this band by step of 100 kilohertz. So, when this is set, which is what is very interesting, is we have an audio channel. This audio channel, the frequency can be still on any frequency you want, by just using uh, the keyboard. You can uh, simply move this uh, the red line, which corresponds to the frequency of the audio channel. This value of the frequency is mentioned here, uh, 10 gigahertz, etc. You can, if needed, uh, set the frequency manually by just uh, putting your mouse in front of any figure. Any Another way to move the frequency is to move, uh, simply turn the mouse wheel. Well, if you turn the mouse wheel, you do step in case of single side band uh, of 10 hertz. If you move the mouse wheel at high speed, the step will increase to 100 hertz or 1 kilohertz in order to be able to move rapidly on the receiving band. Now, if you don't like to use uh, the mouse to steer the frequency, you can use this system. This system is a simple uh, turning button which is uh, it's an optical system which is connected to an Arduino Nano. The Arduino Nano uh, will uh, read the, the optical sensors and send the result via USB to the laptop here, which is uh, which uh, dis display uh, this uh, picture. So this is a conventional way to steer uh, the frequency of the receiver. There is also an additional possibility is to use simply the keyboard, the plus as uh, a left arrow and right arrow, and you can uh, manage by step of 100 hertz or more the, the frequency of the audio channel. So you have different uh, possibility to steer the, the figure. The central frequency here is locked because we have a fixed band but we can unlock it in order to be able to move on the wider band. For example, if you are uh, listening to the frequency modulation broadcast, which is about 20 megahertz of band, you can move the total spectra by any step to the left or to the right. So you just have to unlock the, this uh, central frequency in order to be able to steer the complete system on any frequency you want. Now, if in the case of Q100 or in any other case, you have sometimes a difficulty because the SDR is not exactly on the right frequency. Here we are working at very high frequencies. We have a LNB outside in front of the sun, so the temperature change, so the drift, there is an important drift of the frequency of the LNB, which impacts the display here. So uh, for that, we have to compensate this error. This error can be manually compensated here uh, by uh, putting just my mouse over the figure here and I can just by changing the mouse wheel 
moving the mouse wheel, I can adjust the value. If I want to zoom the value, I just have to click on it. I can move and zoom the, the value there in order to, to adjust this uh, correction. What is interesting uh, in the case of Q100 is that you can do the correction automatically. You just have to click uh, this case here, automatic correction. And we will use uh, two beacons, uh, the lower beacon and the upper beacon, in order to uh, adjust the system to have the two beacons at the right uh, place. If the LED here is in green, that means the compensation is correct. We compensate the system every second. If, for example, currently we have a, a shift of minus 8, 8 hertz per second. Alors, another, an additional point for the receiver, if you want to steer your audio channels by step of 5, 5 kHz or by step of 10 kHz, you a multiple of 10 kHz, you just have to click on 10 kHz. There is also a possibility is to scan the band. Alors, normally this is done in frequency modulation, but here we do it in a single side band. It works quite well. The system automatically will scan the band, defined here in green. You have the threshold, you can adjust it by with the mouse. And uh, you can use the band to cover. So you will just put the to cover the frequency, the interesting part of the band. We do not cover the central frequency because the central frequency is always dis disturbed by uh, the discrepancy between the I and Q channel in, on the SDR side, uh, which introduce errors and you have some spikes and something like that, according to the temperature of the SDR. So let's switch on, for example, the other channel. Okay, the steering has been done automatically of the frequency. You can see that the adjustment is not so bad. You can uh, listen correctly more or less uh, to the frequency. It's a key point, an uh, interesting point I use each time I work in uh, mobile in my car. I can listen to, to the Q and other band and just I click the scan button and automatically the system will scan the band. Every 10 seconds the system uh, scan and so I can listen to the different uh, communication on uh, the satellite. Now we can move to the transceiver side. As the transceiver side you steer the frequency by just moving this slider here. You can, you can uh, modify the frequency. Uh, the transmitter frequency is marked by the dotted line here. Uh, you have the transmitter frequency and uh, we take into account obviously the shift uh, because we transmit, we have a transporter, uh, we transmit at 2.4 and receive at 10.4 but the system uh, makes a conversion. We can force the transmitter for example to use the same frequency as the receivers by clicking on this button RX2 uh, takes so the, automatically the receiver reach the transmitter we can do the reverse uh, transmitter to reach the frequency of the receiver. Or what I do most of the case is simply to link the RX and the TX by clicking on this case, link RX TX in order to have the transmitter following the receiver. Now we have uh, on the receiver side the same difficulty as on the transceiver side. Uh, as uh, uh, transmitter, there is some error in frequencies, we have to compensate. Oh, we have a semi-automatic system to help to compensate the, the error of the transmitter. The first thing to do, we just go on the band where there is nobody. Um, you link the receiver and the transmitter frequency, you listen to the receiver channel, and what we will do we will transmit uh, 800 hertz signal, an audio signal of 800 hertz on the transmitter. So normally, if we are correctly aligned, we should receive a signal, an audio signal at 800 hertz on the receiver. Uh, the system will automatically move the transmitter frequency or compensate the error in order to reach its 800 hertz value. Let's do the test. We have to switch on the transmitter. There is an automatic button, A button here, you have to click on it and we generate 800 signals. Currently uh, we are at 900 Hz, 800 Hz, 870, 840, 820, 800. So we are okay. 
now I can stop transmit so my transmitter is aligned on my receiver because when I transmit 800 Hz I receive 800 Hz so I am perfectly aligned between the two which is important when you are using the satellite and you will access a correspondent to have your system correctly uh, uh, that's uh, interesting capabilities of a remote SDR to align your transmitter. There are also possibilities to generate an 800 hertz tone or two tones, 500 hertz and 1900. So these are facilities in order to verify the linearity of uh, your transceiver, transmitter. On remote SDR, we have a lot of parameters to set uh, to define your system, your hardware, uh, to define the frequency band uh, you want to use on your system, and so uh, all these parameters are grouped in on one page uh, called uh, settings. Here I have a different configuration I use in VHF and UHF. The setting page here. Uh, First, uh, you have to define the access K. The access K is a parameter to allow you to modify, because there is a possibility in remote SDR that anybody, somebody can connect from outside. If you open uh, your system to the outside world, in that case, you need uh, like a password. Here, it's an access K. Alors, one, two, three, four. It's the uh, value to enter if you install remote SDR. On the Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi, you can at any time modify this access K by changing the value in the access K .txt, uh, file uh, on the system in order to put your figures. Uh, here we have um, it's a VHF UHF system, so we can use, for example, an RTL SDR key as the research side. For the X configuration first we have to define all the bands so here we have HF band VHF UHF band all of the band is pre-configured by me uh, it's too much but uh, you can easily remove or add any band uh, you just have to click on modify and you can access all the parameters so for one band you can give a name a frequency min a frequency max and you define also an error which which error it is the error in uh, the you have to compensate because if your SDR is not exactly on the right frequency uh, is when you use for example the automatic uh, system to to adjust your error uh, you know you define the limit in which a system has to look for the, the error so for example in VHF UHF I have minus 2 kilohertz to up to 2 kilohertz because I know my RTL is SDR has a roughly an error of 1 kilohertz uh, for Q100 a bit bigger and so once again it depends your your hardware you have to adjust to your system you can uh, define the frequency offset for example here for uh, Q100 we have an offset uh, due to the LNB of 9.7 uh, gigahertz you can define labels uh, which appears on the spectra uh, you define a frequency and you define uh, a name. Uh, here there is already a, a set of labels. You can also define some colors. So it's interesting, for example, to put in orange the, each edge of the spectra because the, the processing is not so good at the limit of the band uh, on the uh, SDR. So you have to not preferably not to access uh, this part of the band. And for example, also in the middle, uh, you have uh, the difference between the I and Q channel, the discrepancy between the I and Q channel, which it's not the best place where to operate your system in the middle of the. So you can define in green, in green, for example, where you can use the system in orange or red, where you cannot. It's not recommended to use the, the system. The color as as defined in HTML, so the same definition as the HTML code. Uh, you can define some beacons. We have, for example, for Q100, we have three beacons. You can define GPO, uh, GPO, GPIO pins. Interesting. If you change the frequency, if you transmit or receive, you can force one pin to be set to one or zero. There are a lot of uh, free pins on the Raspberry Pi 4 or on the Orange Pi 02. 
and so you can use those pins uh, to switch uh, a filter or whatever. It takes configuration. You can define bands, uh, mean frequency, mean frequency max, a name, and in case of offset, you can define uh, the, the offset uh, between the receiver and the transmitter. If you have uh, uh, an offset in your hardware, because you're, uh, you can define la labels as on the receiver side, you can define colors also uh, as on the, on the receiver side, you can define uh, the frequency of uh, any relay, for example, in VHF and UHF. If you use some radio relay, uh, local radio relays, uh, you can define the shift in frequency between the transmitter and the receiver and define the CTSS frequency in order to open uh, the relay and the name of the relay. You can uh, define the GPO pins on the transmitter side. In some case, some people are not using the transmit the same processor for the transmitter and the receiver. So you have a different set of GPIO pins. So that's all for all the settings. So it's a long discussion, sorry, but there are a lot of parameters and I often receive uh, some questions by mail. So it was important for me to detail a bit more in order to facilitate, facilitate the access to remote to SDR to anybody. And uh, thank you again to use remote SDR to be interested by this uh, system. It's an open source system on f1atv.fr. You can find all the details, all the source code. Uh, you can also send mail or a remark to me. If you construct a system using a remote SDR, send me some pictures that will uh, encourage me to add some new functionalities uh, in this system in order to have something uh, interesting to use for the ham community. 73, thank you again to use remote SDR maybe another time in another video. Bye-bye.